It is levels, like the Quran. Like the Quran has orders. Not every single order in Quran, it means it's wajib or it's obligated. Exactly the same thing with the words of the Prophet ﷺ. Not every order, it means it's obligated. Some of them, as the fuqaha, divide them to uh, levels. Some of them are... Okay. Some of them are... So I just... I don't understand. Why are you having it? That's the... <laughs> And I make sure that you clean this up after we finish the conference. Uh, what I'm saying is, if this is the case, uh, how can we understand this? Al ulama divide this, the, the, the sunnah to levels. The, the highest level, we call it wajib. Then after that, that one level. Second level, we call it recommended, mandu. Third level, we call it mubah which is permissible. So you have wajib, then you have mandub, recommended, obligatory first, then recommended, then permissible. Then you have what we call it haram, here on this side, okay? And you have not recommended, and you have mubah again. And you have in this side, what is forbidden, sin to do, what is not recommended, and what is permissible again. Five categories. What I want you to understand here clearly, that each one of these category itself has different levels. Make sure that you understand this. Each one of these categories has so many different levels. Like for example, if I walk into this door and said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, it is obligatory upon you to respond or not? Huh? Yes. So this is wajib. By being good to your parents is also. Okay, I hope I didn't mess it up. Type. Uh, so saying or being good to your parents is also obligatory. Would you consider them in the same level? Hey, be with me. Same level? Possible. Being good to your parents is equal to say wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah. No doubt they're not the same level. If I sneeze, I said alhamdulillah. He said ya rahmukallah. I said saying rahmukallah, ya ghafurullah lana wa lakum wa hidina sahbihi lakum Allah. This is wajib to reply to you. Is that equal to, is that equal to supporting the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal and giving da'wah to people? No, they are both wajib, but it cannot be the same. It cannot be the same at all. It's a different level. Also forbidden is a'udhu billah, dealing with interest with riba, with your own father or your own brother will be equal to somebody, for example, a cheating and selling. This is a sin and this is a sin. All their sin, but there are levels. That's why you have major, you have minor, you have the great major sins, and so on. So in Sunnah in Nabi Sallallahu also you have to understand this different in levels. And this is something we'll go back to the ulama, to the scholar to explain to you. So first, that's something you have to understand before we go into the issue of understanding the sunnah. Uh, first step, when you have any narrations, any hadith. First step, make sure that this hadith is acceptable hadith, not weak, not fabricated. So first step, the authenticity of the hadith. First step to understand the sunnah, the authenticity of the hadith. Type. Why might ask, how can I know it's authentic? I'll give you an easy answer. One, whatever you see in al-Bukhari and Muslim is authentic. By the ijma, almost the consensus of the ulama, especially in the later time. Three, you have to refer to a great alim, a great scholar who you trust, who you trust to tell you if it's authentic or not. If it's authentic or not. Two, when we hear any hadith or any one of the Prophet ﷺ sunnah, we have to differentiate between what we call it, act of the Prophet ﷺ, which is related to the religion, 
and actions which is related to his human nature as a human being. Because the Nabi Sallallahu will do certain things because he's a human, as a human. But he will do another thing as a prophet. As a prophet. As a role model for the Ummah. He will do it as a part of the religion to explain the Quran. And he will do other things as a part of his culture. For example, in Nabi Sallallahu wear turban. And not because Allah ordered him to wear turban. He was wearing turban before he became a prophet. You see? Also, that's why it's very important when you study the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. You don't take rules from the era before him being a prophet. Like some Sufis sect, they said, it is sunnah to go to the caves and to stay away from the way the people and to be alone and isolated in the desert. And this is in the Prophet ﷺ sunnah. This is the way he was. Hello, this is before he became a prophet. What are you talking about? And Nabi Sallam never did that after he was a messenger. He never ordered his companions to do that. So make sure that you differentiate between what he did as a human or from his own and what he did as a prophet, as an order from Allah to explain that. How can we understand this? We understand it in, 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 a, in a different ways. One, one of the ways that we see if this is, has nothing to do with the religion. Has nothing to do with the religion. Like for example, what kind of food he liked to eat? What kind of colors he liked? Like he liked the colors green. Doesn't mean sunnah that you have to like green. Or names. Names, for example, he liked or he called one of his uh, daughters or son a name. It doesn't mean it's sunnah they have to do that. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for example, used to wear certain type of clothes, certain type of shoes. It doesn't mean you have to do that. And Nabi used to dye his beard with henna. It doesn't mean sunnah for you to dye your beard with henna. It doesn't mean that. You know, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to have a long hair. It doesn't mean you grow your hair. The hair, there's a different, yeah, it's also, or braid his hair to four. It means you braid your hair. No, this is part of his culture. And Nabi Sallallahu used to eat with his hand. Somebody said, I don't eat with, with spoons. Why? Sunnah, ya akhi. Oh, excuse me, there's no sunnah here. And Nabi Sallallahu didn't do that for you to follow. Oh, I don't sit on the table. Why? Sunnah. I don't sit in chairs, it's sunnah. Uh, actually, you mistake, in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sat on chairs. But anyway, in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not do that as an act of worship. He did that as a part of his culture, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So unless you bring proof that this is part of the religion, or something in Nabi recommended as a part of the religion, otherwise it stay as it is. For instance, we say when you buried your dead ones, you shower them or use a white garment. The proof for that is not just because they used to do that. No, in Nabi Sallallahu said, use white garment to use it in the funeral process for your dead one. So in Nabi order us to use the white one. But for example, some people think the sunnah is to wear white clothes when you go to ihram. There is no proof for that. There is no proof for that. A woman wear white for that. Uh, clothes to go to ihram. There is no proof for that. It is some part of the culture. And some people said, okay, we take a ring. I, I told you, and Nabi did not take a ring because it's a part of the religion. You want to take a ring, you, wanna do, you don't want to wear a ring, it's up to you. But and Nabi said, wear the ring because he want to send messages to the kings of his time, of his time. Also, uh, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa sallam used to put kuhul, for example, in his eyes. Kuhul. Uh, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it, not, it doesn't mean that you do. But, you might say, no, kuhul, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam actually recommend the kuhul. He said, tahidu. Put kuhul because it, it helps the uh, person's sight and also to help the hair to grow uh, with the ithmid. That's what the Prophet ﷺ said. Also, sometimes, one, one important thing here, some of the Prophet ﷺ actions 
is not meant for the ummah to follow it or to copy him in it. So it can be only specific to the Prophet And you have to bring proof for that. For instance, in Nabi Sallallahu married more than four wives. Nobody can say, okay, you know, I'm going to follow the sunnah now. Marry more than four. No, you can't. Allah SWT limited mathna wa thalatha wa ruba'a, that's it. In Nabi Sallallahu married more because some, this is a special case. In Nabi Sallallahu used to fast for days continuously. Would not break his fast. One, two, three days. We are not allowed to do that. We're not allowed to do that. This is something special for the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, one of the things, sometimes it became a debatable issue. Like in Nabi said, used to pray two rak'ahs after Asr every day. Some ulama said, like uh, among the Hanafi scholars, Imam al-Tahawi, it seemed to be the most famous opinion among the scholars, that it's something special for the Prophet ﷺ. We don't copy him on that. But some other scholars said no. So some area will have a debate issue about it. But there is other area which is clear cut. This is only the Prophet ﷺ allowed to do so. One more thing also, very important. And Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah emphasized in it a lot in a great book. It's called Ilam al muqeen He said sometimes the Prophet ﷺ will do things based on his position. So you might take this in consideration. Give you an example. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi might order something as a leader for the Muslim. So it's not going to be a sunnah for every single person to do it. Unless you have the same position to be in a leadership position. Yeah, and I give you an example. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, kill so and so person to one of the companions. Because he is the chief in command. He declared war. He declared peace. Because he is the leader of the community. He is the judge of the community. He is the president, the, the, the one who in charge. So it's not, for example, up to somebody today to say, you know what, I declare war against this and this country. Who you are to declare war? In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, declare war. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, assassinate, uh, order some people to assassinate uh, Ka'b ibn al-Ashraf. So you know what, I'm ordered one of my followers to go assassinate so-and-so person. I'm following the sunnah, and this is commonly used. This is wrong, because in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said that as a ruler, not as an individual in the community. Big difference between the two positions. So when you study the sunnah also, you might need to know why he did that, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For example, in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he might change the munkar, the evil thing, with his hand. He stop it, he break it. But it doesn't mean sunnah for everybody to do that. He did it because he's in charge, he's in command, he has the authority to do it. But you see, none of the sahaba did it. Because they don't have the, the authority. But the leaders after the Prophet take the same responsibility and so on. This is very important issue when you study the Sunnah of the Prophet to understand the different of position and why the Prophet did such actions as well. Also, one thing it's, it's a very uh, important uh, when we study huh? uh, the Prophet Wasallam's uh, Sunnah that when we see a hadith contradict each other, we have to deal with it with the methods that the ulama of usul al-fiqh, the scholars of usul al-fiqh have put for us. One, we might find one hadith abrogate the other, came later and abrogated the other one. So here the problem solved. Two, it might be one authentic and one weak. One authentic and one weak. So here we solve the problem. Three, we know that in Nabi Sallallahu will never contradict himself because if he contradict himself, it means Allah contradict himself because all from Allah. So this is not an option. It's so many times because of our lack of research. So when you research a little bit, we come to a rule, a rule which is the vast majority of ulama use, which is called al-jam'ah, al-jam'ah. Some Hanafi scholars have a different way of, they call it, 
At-Tarh. We don't agree with that, with what some of the Hanafi scholars agree as uh, the vast majority of the ulama, even among the Hanafi themselves, so many disagree with this method. Al-Tarh, it means they said, Ta'arada tasaqata. They contradict each other, we leave both. They save the headache, you know? Just move on. And that's not acceptable by the vast majority of the fuqah and the usuliyin. No, they said, we have to understand the meaning. I give you an example, and you will solve the contradiction. Because it, they are contradict, it appear like contradict each other, but in reality they are not. For example, in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, don't write anything I say except Al-Quran. He said that clearly. Don't write anything except Al-Quran. Anybody write anything except Al-Quran, he should erase it. But in other ahadith, clearly he said, write what I say. He said, write for this person's this ahadith, uktubu li abishat, and this is right before his death. So you cannot say this is contradict the, this is abrogate this. He say order them to write to abishat a letter included some of his ahadith or his statements and write before his death. So these contradict each other. How can we solve the contradictions? Very easy. Al ulama said. That in Nabi Sallallahu said that in the beginning of the time for in order for the Sahaba to memorize Al Quran and not to be confused. Other opinions said no. In Nabi Sallallahu said that to the people who write Al Quran only and they bring narration to support that. So the writer of the Quran, they are not allowed to write anything but Al Quran. So this way we understand the hadith. We find, we can understand both now what this means. Other ulama said no, it means don't write Al-Quran and other than Al-Quran in the same, in the same place or the same paper. Did you use paper that time? They use like bones and uh, the dry skin of animals, they write on it and things like that. So uh, don't write it together so it will not be mixed. So this way we understand both of the hadith, the contradiction solved. The contradiction solved. Uh, for example, I just give you an example of drinking water. Sometimes the he said, don't drink water while standing, but he did. He did because of a reason. Because he want to tell people that drinking uh, is uh, because they have to break their fast in the uh, uh, day of Arafah or because he doesn't want people to take it as a habit to sit uh, in next to Zamzam so they will uh, create a, a traffic jam type uh, in this uh, case or uh, for other reasons. Sometimes this contradictions comes also for one more reason. Sometimes in Nabi Sallam would say don't do that or would say, do this. But in Nabi Sallam will not do it, or he will do what he said, don't do it. And he will tell you, don't do it, but he will do it. Or he would say, do it, but he will not do it. Why? Because he want to tell you that this is, doesn't mean it's obligatory in you to do. It's recommended for you to do. So let's say he said, do it, but he will leave it sometimes. He will leave it only to tell you it's not must. Like taraweeh, praying taraweeh in Ramadan. In Nabi Sallam ordered us to do it, but he didn't do it. Except a few days then he left it. Why? To tell us it's not must, it's just sunnah to do it or recommended act to do it. See? Or in Nabi Sallam said, don't do that, but he might do it. Just to tell us it's not forbidden, like in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told men they're not allowed to urinate while they are standing. But in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did it to tell us it's only not recommended to do it. But it's not forbidden, it's not haram. So because in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam position different than us, in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam position is to show us the Sharia in all aspects, in all aspects. Also a very important uh, uh, tips when you uh, try to understand the sunnah that you have to understand the hadith in the light of the other hadith. You cannot take one narration and you leave the rest. You have to collect all of them together and look to the whole picture. The people of innovations and people who follow desires, they only take and pick and choose. They choose one and they leave the rest. This is not right. Also very important to understand 
the, the culture of the time of the Prophet and the definition of the words, of the terminologies. Yani for example, in Nabi Sallallahu said, taking a shower on Friday is wajib upon every Muslim. Some people said, wajib it means obligatory. They take wajib the same meaning of what the fuqaha have invented later on, centuries after that, saying wajib, which is you will be sinful if you leave it and you will be re rewarded if you do. No, in Nabi Sallallahu was not referring to the definition which appeared 100 years after his death. You understand what I'm saying? You cannot do that. You cannot deal with the sunnah like this way. You have to understand what wajib meant in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he, he made Qasr after 13 miles in Sayyid Muslim. 13 miles, then he made Qasr. He didn't go and say, okay, miles, so it's an American way of like majoring the distance. Like miles, we do in America, miles and... and no, it's not. You cannot use the terminology of these days to apply the terminology because it, these have different meanings through centuries. So you have to be aware of the terminology of the Prophet ﷺ time and what it means, what he referred to, in order for you to understand the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, there are so many details anyway in related to this, but I'm just trying to make uh, something uh, closer to your, uh, to be able to understand it. In the end, I would like to say one important rule, that every major scholars who had written an advice to the Muslims or a book uh, related to this subject, he mentioned this point. Al-Bukhari did it, Ibn Ma'in did it, Shafi did it, so many from the earlier scholars, Tabi'een and so on. They all agree in one thing, which is, if you cannot understand the hadith, only accuse yourself and don't accuse the Prophet ﷺ. Only blame your mind, don't blame the Prophet ﷺ. Some people have the opposite. If you don't understand it, ah, oh, this hadith is nothing. Maybe you the one who doesn't know. Hold a second. Wait a second. Like I met one brother, one guy in, uh, in Canada once. He said, oh, hadith, I can't, I can't trust it anymore. I'm Bukhari, Muslim, I don't trust. I said, why? He said, can you believe it? There is a hadith in Sayyid Bukhari saying that uh, there is uh, a people or a nation of people uh, they come up, come from uh, pigs or donkeys. Ah, human being is a human being. I studied uh, human race and he said, there is no human being came from an animal. I said, hold a second, where do you get that hadith from? It's Sahih Bukhari. I said, where is Sahih Bukhari? He said, no, no, I, I know it. I said, it's not. You're lying. <laughs> I said, I know Sahih Bukhari, let's go. And we go to Sahih Bukhari. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is some ummah, one nation, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala punished them, that he turned them to have the shape of pigs. Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the same hadith, and said, such ummah will never bear children. They will never ever be able to, be able to what? To produce another generation. They die. Actually, in one narration, three days, then they die. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned them to this. So where do you get that from? That these pigs come from human beings. This is total, this is your bad understanding. Or somebody said, how come the, pro there is no how come. You have to, if this is what the Prophet said, say, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا We heard and we obey. Once, once, uh, uh, one of the ulama, his name Mu'ab ibn Abi Dharir, was narrating a hadith that in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Adam and Musa, Adam and Musa debated each other. Then his uncle said, what does Adam and Musa have met? Adam and Musa, there is a big difference between them. Oh, they're never going to meet each other. Then Harun Rashid took the sword and he told him, he telling you, the Prophet said, and you're telling him, how come? Wallahi, if you don't repent now, I'm going to execute you. Like warning him. And he said, I, I stop. 
The people show respect. That's why Ibn Mas'ud and Ali عنه, said, if you hear hadith from the Prophet only think good about it. Don't think the worst of it. Only think good, try to in a good way. Some people have this, the, inish, the, the first reaction toward the hadith is the rejection, not the acceptance. No, your first reaction is, if it is authentic, I believe in it. Because you know, we have a limited mind. One sheikh, sorry to say that he, as a sheikh, when he said that, when he heard about the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, if a fly, fly, fall in your cup, and you have a drink in that cup, don't drink it unless you dip it. Then after that you take it out, then if you want to drink it, you can drink it. But don't drink it without doing that. He said, Ugh. you know? This so-called sheikh said, this is disgusting. Islam is a religion, order people to be clean and nice and good. Fly is a disgusting. And anyway, he keeps saying that until a German researcher, a German researcher came with a research saying, that the fly has under one of the wings a bacteria. And in the other side, ant the antibacteria for this, the, the cure for this one. So in Nabi Sallallahu said, if it fall, because usually it fall on one side. He said, dip it, because by the, when you dip it, the pressure will release the antibacteria or the, the cure, so you will not be get hurt. When this sheikh said, oh, this is miracle. <laughs> I said, hey, you believe in the German research. You don't believe in Rasulullah. You believe in the German doctor. You don't believe in, in Rasulullah. But the German doctor made you believe. But not what the Prophet ﷺ said. Big different. So we have a limited mind. Like somebody said, Sheikh, we know now this is no harm by having this or doing that. You don't know, ya akhi. 20 years ago, people didn't see, people discover things in these modern days and said, oh, well, lie, that's right. Maybe 100 years from now, things will change. You didn't know. The religion will not change. Religion is a fact. And people and history and sci not all the science, but theories is changeable. Is something changeable. But religion is always something will remain. Uh, and with this, I would like to conclude my uh, speech uh, by asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to give us the uh, ability to always follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu all the time, and to understand it and memorize it. And I would like to mention in the end one of the great books, one of one of the great books. I wish that every brothers and sister here today or will listen to this speech wherever they are. They should read in it in, in a very frequent time, the book of Riyad al-Salihin. It's, it's a great book. And I wish that you really read it and complete reading it. And if you can add to it one of the explanation for Riyad al-Salihin, it will be great. But this book, a great book, it teach a lot of, uh, a lot of things that Muslim I think they need to know in their life. And also uh, books like Sayyid al-Bukhari or the summary of Sayyid al-Bukhari. Uh, it will be an, a good book for the person to read. And also the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi It's something else. Uh, I think a Muslim should uh, read it like the Nectar Seal by Mubarak Fori. It's a great book to read and it's related to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu because it's about his life. Uh, these uh, books, I really highly recommended you to uh, read it uh, frequently and uh, to look at it all the time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad. Jazakallah to the Sheikh for that enlightening presentation. And inshallah, from this, what we'd want is that 
whatever he said is to affect our mind first and to have us thinking and open up our minds. And from our minds, it should affect our heart. And from our heart, it should affect our actions and our hands and our eyes and our feet into positive things, inshallah. We just open up the floor for a few questions because time is behind us about three. So the first three questions come up answering, inshallah. Three is the sunnah. Is that so, Sheikh? Three is the sunnah or? Is three the sunnah? Five. Five. <laughs> Take from the sister, from the brothers. First question. What do you say to people who when you advise them about Bidda, they say that every action in life is an act of worship. So driving cars is Bidda, and sleeping on mattresses is Bidda, etc. When you tell them Bidda is related to matters of the deen. Uh, alhamdulillah. Uh, salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. Uh, bid'a, as, exactly as you said, uh, is something related to the religion. And driving car is not an act of worship. Who said that? If it's an act of worship, it means if I drive Mercedes, I will be rewarded more than the one driving Mazda. <laughs> and it doesn't make any sense. You know, if I'm driving 2005, I will be higher than 2001. Okay, worship, worship act is different levels. How is that works? <laughs> I'm gonna be a truck driver from now on. You know, if it's I don't know how they will define the big one, the small one. You know, who said that driving is an act of worship? Who said that you, when you eat, you are worshiping Allah? Who said that? How much Allah? I worship a lot. That means, you know, what that means? Who said that? They will tell you, share, yani, because you eat, because you want to be healthy, so you can pray in the night. You drive the car so you can go to the mosque. So the act of worship is not the driving, it's the intention. Big different. It's a big difference between this and that. So... No doubt that what they're saying, every act, every act in the world is, is an act of worship. No. It's when Nabi Sallallahu said, when somebody, when intercourse happened between the husband and wife, it's, it's, it's an ajr. He didn't say it's an act of worship. He said it's a form of sadaqah. But the ajr comes out of it. Because the intention. Because he has a pure intention. So in this case, we will know the bid'ah is also related to the issue in religion. Because this religion is not an, uh, it's an open door for everybody to make up his own way. We are followers now. The Prophet closed, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, reflected both. The rich and poor, today our people clothes reflect the non-Muslims, all the day may be loose. I don't understand that one. <laughs> the prophet's clothes reflected both the rich and poor. Today our people's clothes reflect the non-Muslims, although they may be loose. Yes, um, I understand what you're trying to say. The Prophet's clothes, he wear expensive and cheap ones. Today people, they don't really care about expensive or cheap, he said people care about fashion or just imitating the Western. Uh, this is the rules. If there is a clause, only, only, non-Muslims wearing it, nobody else wearing it, it became not allowed to wear it. Like for example, you know the small little hat that Jewish wear it? No, no Muslims say, it's cool, I want to wear it, you know? We said, no, it's not allowed. Uh, you know, these uh, Catholic priests, they wear these things, put it in, the, in their uh, uh, con of the shirt. Muslims said, oh, it looks cool, you know, I want to do it. We said, no, it's not allowed. Because only those people wearing the cross, only Christians wear cross. So you're not allowed to wear it. 
or the star of the Jewish, things like that. But anything became a common between people, Muslim and non-Muslim, you're allowed to wear it. You're allowed to wear it. Like pants, shirts, uh, uh, skirts, uh, you know, uh, t-shirts, whatever. But if you say anything, the Western wear, we're not allowed to wear, that means I'm, I cannot wear underwear, I cannot wear, you know, t-shirt, I cannot wear because socks. This is like the scuffar things, you know? It's nonsense, you know? Okay, he best talking about the pants. Okay, what about under the pants? Okay, it's haram also, you know what I'm saying? About your, your shirt, what about the undershirt? You see what I'm saying? It's a very unacceptable way of argument. You tell me, it's not allowed to wear the pants. Okay, you know what? But Okay, we can go the whole nine yard, you know? Uh, so, uh, we have to be also mix being uh, just when we talk. No. Uh, no doubt, remember the condition I said before, the certain condition, the clause, it has to be met beside that. No. The Hadith concerning the etiquettes of Rasulullah for example, the way he ate, slept, and used the washroom, etc. Didn't he do these acts before and after prophethood? If so, are these not to be followed since they are sunnah as well as his customs? No, and Nabi Sallallahu did not used to do the same way of supplication. These things he learned it after he became a prophet, the supplication that he used to do or the way he see to sleep. And that's how he ordered us to follow him in these things. That's why he became sunnah. Uh, but for example, if in Nabi Sallallahu let's say it's been narrated that he once been heard snor snoring. It's not so much snore. You know, it's part of his human being culture. It's the way maybe he heard once doing that. You see what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to say. And it's been reported in Nabi Sikana, Nama wa yamfukh. It was in Nabi Sallallahu yamfukh, it means uh, like this. Uh, it's not really a snoring. Uh, type. Uh, that's one. Uh, the other thing is about uh, uh, the way he supplication and that sleeping and dressing. Yes, yeah, slept and usually was true. Uh, a wudu, no, the wudu is after being a prophet. That's what Allah taught him, and this is revealed in the Quran. Now, how to perform wudu? Coal, as used by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, someone use it as makeup or form of beautification. Can women use it as beautification in public? That is where people other than non mahram you see them. Uh, uh, well, I don't know what call mean, but kuhul, kuhul, okay, kuhul, call. I said, tayyib, tayyib. No problem. Kuhul, uh, kuhul. Uh, uh, women and men as well both use it. Kuhul's uh, woman, kuhul that women use has no color in the process of time, but the kuhul of men has color has color. Uh, anyway, uh, Aisha used to put something on her lips, which is make it red. They used to put dye, Aisha dye the front of her hair with, with the something yellow, which is, you know, turn it to a little bit yellow. Uh, this has been reported uh, about the woman of the Prophet wasallam, and in the time of the Sahaba, it's common among the people to do such things like that. Uh, but she's not allowed to do this in public because the whole point is not to attract uh, attention to her while she walk, while she is walking. So anything she will put and will attract people to attract the people's attention to her, or she's not allowed to do or to wear. Basically, this is the rule. But she can put makeup as much as she wants if she's going to cover her face. <laughs> now. I heard the Sheikh reciting Quran for the session. Will he recite some more Quran for us? Inshallah, when you pray behind me, Inshallah. <laughs> inshallah, so if you all want to stay until Maghrib to hear the Sheikh recite, is you all a call. All want to stay until Maghrib. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't know. Shall I say uh, tomorrow? Shall I do the Shall Allah Akbar. <laughs> okay, that's it for the questions. Inshallah, we have now the next session. But I think you will do for a five-minute break. So before the five-minute break, one announcement that the Sheikh will be on IBN 
tonight between 9 to 10 for one hour, inshallah. So if you all want to see the Sheikh again, maybe hear him recite Quran live, you could tune in, inshallah. Now we have a five minute break. And please, I don't want to come and run around outside looking for brothers and sisters and chit chatting and things. Five minutes.